Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about an idea called conditional probability. Let's recall the definition of empirical or experimental probability. So if we want to find the probability of a particular event, E, then we're going to count the number of times that E was observed divided by the total number of times the experiment was repeated. We're going to use this basic definition of empirical probability to answer the following questions. This example comes from my labs. It's an example of conditional probability, but you don't have to know the definition of conditional probability to answer it. We're given a, the results of a survey. So some customers at a restaurant were surveyed as to whether the service was good or poor, and their answers were recorded along with whether they were a lunch customer or a dinner customer. We'd like to find the empirical probability that the customer gets good service and compare that to the empirical probability that they get good service given that we know it was lunchtime. So let's start with just the probability of good service. For that, we don't know if it's lunch or dinner, so we're gonna look at our totals. The total number of customers that reported good service was 48. Those are the number of times that the event we're looking for, good service, occurred and the total number of customers surveyed, in other words, the total uh, repetitions of the experiment, is 97. So the probability of good service is going to be 48 over 97, which is approximately 0.49. Now let's think about what's the probability of good service given that we know it's lunchtime. Well, if it's lunchtime, then we only have 56 observations to go out of. And out of those 56, service was good 23 times. So the probability of good service, given that it's lunchtime, is actually 23 over 56, or approximately 0.41. So notice that the probability is different depending on if we have this extra piece of information or extra condition. This is called a conditional probability. Sometimes the probability of an event must be computed using the knowledge that some other event has happened, will happen, is happening. It actually doesn't matter what tense of the verb you use. And this type of probability is called conditional probability. The formal definition of conditional probability says that the probability of an event B computed on the assumption that event A has happened is called the conditional probability of B given A. And the notation we use is probability parenthesis B bar A, but we read it as probability of B given A. For the next example, we're going to use the theoretical definition of probability, which is basically you divide the number of favorable outcomes by the total number of possible outcomes. So this is the kind of probability where you haven't actually observed the event, but you're just assuming equally likely outcomes. This applies in this example because we're randomly selecting from a sample space of numbers. The numbers we're selecting from, imagine writing them on slips of paper and putting them into a hat and drawing one at random, are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We're going to define the events A and B as follows. A is the event that the number we pull out of the hat is odd, and B is the event that the number is a multiple of three. And the probabilities we're interested in calculating are the probability of B and A happening, and the probability of B given that A has occurred. S is the whole sample space. B is the event that we draw out of that sample space a multiple of three. A is the event that we draw an odd number out of that sample space. So B contains three, six, and nine, and A contains three, five, seven, and nine. First, we're going to look for the probability that both B and A occurred. That's the same as saying the probability that we have drawn out of the hat a number that is both a multiple of three and an odd. And then we're gonna compare that to what about the probability of B given A? In other words, the probability that we draw a multiple of three given that we know it's going to be an odd number that we draw out of the hat. Let's start with part A. Remember that the number of ways that B and A can occur 
is going to be the number of uh, outcomes that are in the intersection of B and A. The number of outcomes that are both a multiple of three, three, six, or nine, and odd, three, five, seven, or nine. What is the overlap between those two sets? What are the only odd multiples of three? Three and nine. So knowing that, the probability of B and A happening is going to be the number of elements in, in the set containing only three and nine, so that's gonna be just two, divided by the total number of outcomes that were possible in our hat. There are eight of them. So the probability of A and B happening is two eighths, or we can reduce that to one fourth. So we have a quarter of a chance of drawing an odd multiple of three. Now let's look at part B. So over here, we're going to calculate the probability of B, a multiple of three, given that we know that the number we're gonna draw out of the hat is odd. Okay, so how do we know that? I don't know, but however we know it, it's exactly like someone has removed all of the even numbers from the hat. So in this hat, what is left is a three, five, seven, and a nine. And we wanna know how many multiples of three are in there. Well, only the three and the nine are left in there that are multiples of three. So the probability of B given that A has occurred is going to be the number of ways that we can get a three or a nine, which are the only multiples of three that are left out of the set that is a kind of reduced sample space, which is the set three, five, seven, nine. We don't have any even numbers left. Well, notice that this guy up here, this is actually A intersect B. And this guy down here, that's actually the set A. So the probability of B given A is going to be two out of four or one half. So notice that the probability of B and A both happening is different than the probability of B given that A has occurred. In the conditional probability on the right, the sample space has been reduced and we actually have a better chance of getting the same outcome. So the important thing to remember when you're calculating a conditional probability is that you're only gonna be concerned with the number of outcomes that are in both A and B divided by a sample space which has been reduced down to just the number of elements in A. The same formula can be written in terms of probabilities. So you can take the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A and you will still get the same result. Let's look at another example. Given a family with two children, find the probability that both are boys given that at least one is a boy. It's important to list out your sample space. In a family with two children, it's possible to have two girls or a girl first and then a boy or a boy first and then a girl or two boys. Now, one of the events that we're interested in is having at least one boy. And there are three ways that that can happen. Girl, boy, boy, girl, or boy, boy. We'll call that event A. Another event that we're interested in is the event of having two boys. We'll call that event B. So if we're looking for the probability that both are boys given that at least one is a boy, we're looking for the probability of B given A. And that's going to be the number of ways to get both A and B divided by the number of ways to get just A. So let's see where this one third is coming from. So A and B, well, the only overlap between A and B is boy, boy. So there's only one way that both A and B can happen. And then the number in A is all three of these outcomes. So the probability of B given A is one third. Note that this calculation would work if we used the probability version of the formula instead. So here I've rewritten the formula as 
probability of B given A equals probability of A intersect B over probability of A. So let's work it this way. So what would be the probability of A and B happening? Probability of A and B, again, A and B is the overlap between A and B. There's only one outcome that is in both of those events. That's boy, boy. And to find the probability of that, we would have to divide the one by the total number of possible outcomes in the sample space, which is four. So we would have one fourth of a probability for A and B happening. Now the probability of A happening would take into consideration the three outcomes in the set A divided by the four in the sample space, three fourths. To divide one fourth by three fourths is the same as multiplying one fourth times four thirds. You can think of that as multiplying by the reciprocal. You can think of it as keep change flip. In either case though, you're going to see that the fours cancel and you get one third, which is the same probability that we had before. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up.